we can start our discussion. This is a statement the banking assertions reported in the media on alleged benevolence of MP for Hassan Central Kennedy Ajepon in respect of the murdered journalist Divela Hussein Ahmed Swale. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, the family of the gruesomely murdered journalist, Devela Hussein Ahmed Swali, welcomes you all to this press briefing on the above subject. We regret that in this difficult moment in the life of the family, we have had to be engaged in what can be best described as a conscious and deceitful effort of some individuals in trading the dastardly assassination of our son for self-adulation. Um, Friends of the media, it has come to the notice of the family through some media platforms of a shameful claim by Mr. Kennedy Ajapon to have ever met our late son. Divela Hussein Ahmed Swali. This is a falsehood and a preemptive act at uh, procrastinating the resolution of the issues surrounding the murder of our son and to disrupt the painstaking effort of well-meaning individuals, countries and security agencies in Ghana from getting to the bottom of the matter through diversionary tactics. We are confident and hopeful that the thunder spreads worldwide and the innocent soul of our son will soon hound out those whose hands are dripping with his blood. It is further insinuated that the MP for Assen Central publicly claimed that he assisted with the payment of the school fees of our son in the year 2012. This assertion is nothing but the desperation of an overly excited person over the demise of our son and the exploitation of the perpetual silence of the dead. Swale is one of the many graduates of the family and all his siblings are sponsored from within the family resources. It has to be noted that our son entered the University of Ghana in the academic year 2008-2009 and graduated in the year 2012. Curiously, the family solely paid the school fees of Swale and, uh, for three academic years of his studies. That is 2008-2009 academic year, 2009-2010, uh, 2010-2011. But the MP is suggesting that the family could not afford the fees of his last academic year, 2011-2012 fees. Sorry, but is the MP suggesting that the family could not afford the fees of his last academic year, that is 2011-2012 uh, fees? Indeed, if you intend to easily win a debate, go into a contest with the dead. For they remain silent to crown you the winner. For purposes of emphasis, at no point in the entire education journey of our son was he assisted by Mr. Kennedy Ajapon. Our family has always had um, a wherewithal to fund the education of its members, and Swale was no an exception. In his desperate attempt to distract, uh, to distract the work of the security agencies in unraveling the truth and to further his hateful conduct against Tiger Eye staff, the MP further claimed 
that our brother was no more a staff or member of Tiger IPI, and that Swale and Anas were not at talk, uh, on talking terms prior to his demise. How could individuals at loggerheads jointly secure visas to travel out of Ghana, out of Ghanaian jurisdiction for an assignment which was due in the first week of the month of February? That is the month of February 2019. Maybe Mr. Ejepong can assist us with a copy of the resignation letter of our son from the Tiger IPI group and withdraw his paycheck as was deposited in his salary account for the month of December 2018. Again, how is it that someone who had fallen out with an organization would serve as a witness in a myriad of suits brought against the organization as a result of the work of that organization. Swale was one of the witnesses representing Tiger Eye in an investigative state agency. This is a fact. Some members of our family know that a day before Swale's death, he was with Mr. Anas. In fact, on the day of his unfortunate assassination, he was with Anas throughout and had informed some family members about collaboration between Tiger Eye and the Attorney General's office to prosecute those implicated in the uh, number 12 expose. Mr. Ejepong has also alleged that Anas had not come to see the family before announcing the death of our son. We want the whole world to know that Mr. Anas was one of the foremost people informed about the murder incident even before the family members could be informed. And this was because we knew the strong ties that existed between, the, between, between our son and his boss, Anas, was more than blood relationship. The family holds the view that the decision of Mr. Ejepon to place 100,000 Ghana cities bounty on the killers of our late son is not only deceptive, but an exacerbated obstruction to divert the attention of the general public and change the face of the ongoing investigations by the security agencies. We are really offended by this act of Mr. Kennedy Ajepon and decry sin. It is an insult to the conscience of the family that a man who called for harm to be visited on our son would only turn around a few months down the line after that call for harm has been overly subscribed to say he is placing a bounty on the head of those who may have acted on his call and gotten leads thereby to carry out the acts. We call on the general public and the media, the world over, to ignore such runs and, no, and to not further avail their esteemed platforms for such cacophony. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to state this fact once more. At no point did our diseased family member feel a sense of immense insecurity until Canada Japan splashed his photographs in the media with the accompanying incitement of violence against him. Another perfidious statement by Mr. Ejepon is that he only asked our son to be harmed if he ever entered his premise. Everyone who has watched the irresponsible video conducted by Mr. Ejepon knows that not only did he ask our beloved son Eswale to be harmed at his premises, but everywhere he said in chief and to wit, if you meet him anywhere, beat him. If he comes here, beat him. The first part of his call for harm is clearly non-locational, specific or non-locationally specific. 
as he would want us to believe after the horrors of his conduct stare him in the face. It is not even deceptive to think that his call for harm was in relation to his premise. Why didn't he simply show the picture of Swally on uh, the picture of Swally to only his workers if he was indeed talking to only his workers about his premises? What was he tending what was he intending to achieve by further disclosing the residential location of our son and threatening to put out the car numbers of our son? Was it also directed to his staff at his premises? We are appealing to Mr. Ejepon to allow the innocent soul of our son, father and brother, to rest in eternal peace. We consider his latest attempt at dragging the name of one of the widows of our late son into his state of anarchy and an utter provocation. We have had enough of his hate for Swali and his conscious diabolical posture. The MP also keeps referring to our beloved son as a dangerous boy and seeks to insinuate that he was a rascal. We wish to state unequivocally that our son was educated, he was a journalist of international repute, he worked hard, contributed to naming, shaming, and jailing of corrupt and bad persons around the world, and in particular, Ghana. He did an honest job and end a living. Ladies and gentlemen, we are calling on the government and other relevant state institutions and actors to call on Mr. Ejepon to refrain from talking ill of our late son and brother, as that is provoking a lot of family members and the general public to respond to him in equal manner. The family has been going through a lot of pain to control the tempers of well-meaning citizens who want to respond as that could mar the speedy investigations that are ongoing and get justice for our late son. However, if he doesn't refrain from, the, from, from it, the family is not responsible for any deserving response to get, uh, he gets from well-meaning Ghanaians for his insensitive and inhumane utterances. We shall hold him personally responsible should anything happen to our late brother's family and all those who have associated with us in seeking the appropriate legal, legal sanctions, justice, for our late son, brother, friend, and a national hero. Friends of the media, we have full confidence in the security agencies, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty will continue blessing them with the requisite knowledge, will, and, expert, and, and, and expertise to bring the killers to book. Our son was not a vagabond as Mr. Ejepong likes to brand him. He was a journalist, one of the best investigative journalists this continent ever produced. Thank you for coming. May Allah bless us all. So ladies and gentlemen of the media, this is the end of our press briefing on some of the allegations that are being meted out. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead. Maybe two or three questions, fine.
are still waiting. If there are some questions from the media, you can ask. Yes, sir. Okay, so has there been any direct interaction between the family and Mr. Japan? There hasn't been any direct interaction between the family and Mr. Japan, and we are not prepared to have any direct interaction with him. The only that we don't know him. We don't know him. The only direct interaction we have is with the security agencies, the media, and the government. Yes, sir. Please, as a family, are you satisfied with the rate of investigation by Ghana Police Service? There are still the investigations are still going on. We are waiting. The investigations are still going on, and um, the the Ghana Police Service keeps us um, updated as to where they have gotten to, what they are doing. We are being updated, so um, it's still it's still ongoing. So let's wait to is see the end, so that we can tell you whether we are satisfied with it or we are not satisfied. Is it possible to share with the general public with the, how far Ghana Police Service have reached their investigations? Um, that is not possible, sir. For now, let's, let's, let's leave that to the, uh, uh, the police service and then the investigative body to continue with what they are doing. Because once an information comes out, it tends to jeopardize the investigations. Is the family considering legal action against Honorable Kenai Japan? Swale's case is a murder case. And murder cases are not civil cases, they are criminal cases. Civil cases are between individuals. Murder cases are between the government and the perpetrators of the work. So for the family, we are leaving the government to continue to do what they want to do. Thank you. So has the police invited the family for any question? Every day we get an invitation. So we are constantly in touch with the police. What about um, Ahmed Boss? Has he also appeared uh, at the police? And how is the coordination between you and then him? We are, we are, we are, we are always in touch with him. We talk, but as to whether he has been invited by the police, I think that answer is with the Ghana Police Service. So, um, in the absence of any further questions, I would want to say thank you very much for making time to come. And then we would want to also encourage you that Swale happened to be one of you. The pressure on government, the pressure on civil society, the pressure on the security agencies should not be left with the family. The media, you have a big role to play. He was one of us as a family. He was one of you as a family. We sitting here are not the only family of Swali. You are also his family. So we expect that the media does not allow this issue to die a natural death. Thank you so much. May Allah bless us all. I'm Mustafa Ikusu. Um, just, just coming from uh, my eh? 
<laughs> okay, one of my sons. He doesn't. He, he, he's my son, but he's, he's, he doesn't want me to say that he's a brother. No problem. Um, they just reminded me that um, we should say a word of prayer for our security agencies. Say a word of prayer for the journalists. So um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him to do that because he's an imam. So imam, kindly give us some prayer for our security agencies, for our journalists, for the protection of everybody in Ghana. Before we call it. So let's pray. We thank Almighty Allah for bringing us together here, for the journalists to cover the, our uh, press conference. Pray to Almighty Allah to forgive our brother Swali. We got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. We know he has done his part. And we pray for God in affection for the other journalists, the remaining journalists. Any of you can be a victim. Pray for your protection from the Almighty Allah. May He protect you. May He encourage you more to do more than what you are doing. You are our protectors. You bring us our great grievances. So we always be with you to come out with good news. We pray for our security agencies. May God protect them, especially the investigator in this case. May God Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give him heart and patience to go inside deep to bring out whoever is involved in this case. May Allah protect him. Whoever is doing the investigation, we are praying solely for that person. May God protect him to bring out the truth of the matter. And we pray, may our brother rest in peace. Amen. We pray for Ghana. May God Allah give us peace in Ghana. Amen. May he give us peace. Amen. Whatever we are hearing or seeing in other countries, we pray to Allah not to let us see anything of it in Ghana. Amen. We are brothers and sisters. May he give us peace all the time. Day and night. Amen. 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 Amen.